Today I'm going to tell you all about the gear that I am packing on my canoe trips in 2022. I made a video of all of my canoe camping gear last year in 2021. I will link that video if you want to check that out, but a lot of things have changed and I want to make some little comments on why I bring some of the things that I brought because I get comments on what gear I use while I'm camping from these type of videos, from my shorts, things like that. So this video is going to be not just only what I bring, but some little anecdotes about some of the items as well. Hopefully you can hear me over the sounds of all these wonderful birds outside. I'm going to start with this end and work my way to that end. At the end of the video, I'm going to address some of the things that I don't have laid out here and why I don't have them laid out here and also just mention them. So if you're using this video to pack for a camping trip, you can think about some of these other things as well. I'm not saying that all of this is comprehensive, but this is just what I personally pack when I don't forget anything. <laughs> Starting here, this is my blue bear barrel. Um, I use this barrel because it's easy to pack my food into. I can bring it, put it up on my back, and you can put a lot of food in here, and it can be very, very heavy, but since it's in such a nice pack and you can strap it on, it's so much easier to transport the food. It's not bear safe, but it's bear resistant. Bears can definitely get into this food pack if they would like to, but it's gonna be a little bit more work. Sometimes when you're portaging on a canoe portage from one lake to the next, um, you can have issues with bears smelling your food if you set down your food and go back to get other gear. So this is a little bit bear resistant. You're not, bears aren't gonna get into this immediately and it buys you some time, especially on portages. It makes me feel a little bit better but definitely a bear can get into this if they wanted to. So it's also advisable to hang bear barrels with your food in it at night and when away from camp. I bring a rope. This rope that I have is nice and thick. Uh, when this barrel is loaded with food for like nine people for multiple days, you want like a good, decent rope to lift the barrel off of the ground and not just like destroy your hands doing so. If you have smaller amounts of food or you're going backpacking and want to hang your food, you can always use some kind of smaller string or paracord to hang your food. Just depends on how heavy your food is, um, but make sure you have enough rope to be able to throw the rope over a tree branch. They're not always going to be the exact height you want, so you want some extra rope to get up there and to be able to pull your food up off of the ground. There are lots of videos and resources on how to do that online, so I'm not going to get into that. but. My rope and my bear barrel are the first things over here. The next big item is my portage pack. So this is my pack that I wear on my back. And then this is the liner. So I put a plastic liner inside of my pack and I load all of my items into my liner inside of my pack. And I roll the top of that plastic liner to help make sure that this is going to be as watertight as possible. This is just like a canvas material, so water can get into it. Um, but this extra layer that I put inside of my pack just helps it to be a little bit more water resistant. Attached to my portage pack here, I always have some carabiners so I can attach other little things to my pack. Sometimes I attach a map or little bug spray pack things um, and then I also just have extras for water bottle or whatever else I might want to attach to my pack. The next thing we're going to talk about is clothing. As far as clothing goes, I tend to not pack a ton of clothing. I will wear the same clothes for a few days and then if I'm camping for a long period of time I'll actually wash my clothes in my kitchen sink that I pack um, away from camp and then hang those to dry in camp. It usually only takes a couple hours to wash and dry clothes if it's nice and sunny out. So then I can wear those same clothes again and they're clean. So I pack my clothes into this dry bag and then this helps to keep my clothing dry. You roll the top and snap it. When my clothes are in here, I actually also use this as a pillow if I would like to use a pillow while I'm reading or something. I'm a crazy person that doesn't usually pack a camping pillow because I don't sleep with pillows typically. But getting into my clothing, I like to pack three pairs of socks. I found that to be the perfect number of socks for me. I have one pair that I keep, that I know I'm going to get wet, one pair that I am going to try my best to keep dry, and then a backup dry pair for if my dry pair gets wet. <laughs> I bring comfortable bras. I like to bring enough underwear, one for each day that I'm going, sometimes an extra pair in case I like fall in the lake and want to switch, of course. 
Uh, I'll bring at least one pair of shorts, usually only one pair of shorts, but sometimes I'll bring two. I'll bring one sweatshirt or warmer jacket to layer on top of my other clothing if I get chilly, especially in the mornings and at night. I typically only pack one, one or two pairs of pants, and I do synthetic pants, not jeans. Jeans, when they get wet, they're so heavy and they take forever to dry out. These pants, when they get wet, they take 20 minutes to dry out, depending on the weather. I also like to pack one synthetic blend or synthetic t-shirt. The one I have here is actually the one that I sell. Um, this is my YouTube shirt and I have different leaves from all the different plants on here so it can help you identify different trees as you're camping based on the leaf or needles and that's on the shirt if you'd like to look at those, check those out. There is a link in the description of this video. And I usually take that camping and layer that. So if I get cold, I will wear that t-shirt on top of a long sleeve. This one is a turtleneck. It's not any special material or special brand. It's just a turtleneck that I have at home um, that I ended up getting a bleach stain on. So now it's like my camping turtleneck. I also bring a pair of leggings or um, thermal bottoms to keep me warm even in the summer because it can get chilly at night, even during the day. I have a thermal top long sleeve that I bring year round as well. Finally, a tank top. I usually just pack one or two tank tops. Those are nice for layering. You can tell I have like long sleeve, short sleeve, tank top, jacket. Sometimes I end up wearing all of those at the same time. It's important to think layer, 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 <laughs> layer if you get cold. So you don't have to bring four or five sweatshirts. You just layer all of your clothes together and it'll keep you warmer. I have these water shoes that I like to bring. Sometimes I'll just bring sandals and wear socks with them. I wear socks um, with sandals as water shoes, like strap sandals like Tevas or something like that. And I wear socks with them so that the straps don't give me blisters when they get wet. I have these water shoes this year. Seekway actually sent me these water shoes this year. So far I've really liked them. They sponsored one of my videos in the past, so I have those. I also wear hiking boots. And that's what I like to wear around camp or if I decide to go hiking while camping. Here I have my pack towel. I love to swim when I'm camping, so this is just a nice large towel. You can get different sizes that is fast drying and a lot lighter weight than a regular bath towel. Typically in my past I've always brought regular bath towels from home when I go camping and that's worked just fine. But if you're looking for something a little bit lighter and quicker drying, then a pack towel can be a great idea. I also like to pack a camp game or two if I'm going camping with some friends, something to do at camp. There are lots of different camp, camp type games. You could just bring a pack of cards if you're a card player. This is Pass the Pigs. I just brought this one out because I had this in my camping gear from a previous trip. And then this is my rain jacket. I like to bring rain jacket and rain pants if possible. My rain pants I recently ripped <laughs> right on the butt crack of my rain pants while I was camping. So I'm getting a new pair of those. So currently I just have my rain jacket here. Um, I bring a rain jacket on almost every camping trip I go on, unless I know it's gonna be really, really hot because then if it rains, I don't really mind getting wet personally. But otherwise, I just, I just try to bring my rain gear every time. I like to pack colored pencils and something to color on. I have this habit of when I'm camping, I'll sit at some place in my camp that I sit at a lot during that campsite stay and I will draw the scene so that I can look back through my photos that I've drawn. They're not amazing drawings, but I can look back at them and kind of remember being there. I also have a book. I like to pack a book when I go camping. Be careful with that. The books always come back, my books at least, in not great condition. A lot of like charcoal thumb prints on the pages or leaves or just bugs and dirt. So don't bring your favorite book necessarily unless you don't care if it gets destroyed, which I don't. I have my toiletries here. I like to bring a mini hairbrush. I have some uh, natural shampoo and conditioner. I still don't use this. Is it raining? It's starting to rain. Okay, that's cool. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, this is my natural shampoo that I like to use. I don't use this in the river or lake, even though it is natural. I still wash my hair and body away from the 
any water source, so I try not to pollute it. Just because it's natural doesn't mean you're not polluting the water. I have an old film canister here that I actually put sunscreen in. In my toiletries, I have a toothbrush, bug spray, a Diva Cup tampon, and toothpaste. So this is like my little toiletries kit. Sometimes I put other things in there as well. I like to pack body wipes, face and body wipes, because if I don't want to shower because it's just too cold while I'm camping, then I'll use body wipes and wipe my body down and clean up a little bit. And then I pack these out into a garbage can when I leave my camping experience. I have a sleeping pad. If you watch my other videos, you know I don't always pack a sleeping pad, but when it's cold, this can be a lifesaver. I have a sleeping bag. Of course, you want to bring a sleeping bag, whatever one fits you and is the right temperature for your camping experience. Obviously, I always pack a tent of some sort. This is a tent that I just got this year and tried out, uh, but you can bring whatever tent fits your number of people and it's not going to be so heavy that you don't want to portage it across the portage. This is my hammock that I pack. I have an Inu hammock, but any kind of hammock works. It's nice and lightweight. I do pack bear spray when I go camping, especially by myself. This is another dry bag. I sometimes put food in here or other things, but it's just nice to have dry bags that you can put anything in that you really don't want to get wet. If you're going to bring your phone, it's nice to have them in a Ziploc bag, in a dry bag, so that you can try to keep those items dry. But you can always use dry bags for lots of different things. When I camp, I always pack extra string or paracord or rope. I have needed to use this to get my tent to set up correctly. I've used this as a clothesline in camp if I want to dry out my clothing or towels or things like that. There's so many uses that this can be used for. Sometimes it helps to hang the food barrel or the food pack. And I've used this uh, to make some kind of an anchor while fishing. So lots of uses for some kind of rope or paracord. I have a water filter. You also want to think about how you're going to filter your water. There are lots of different options. I have a pump water filter, but there's so many different options out there. Always bring a headlamp and usually some kind of flashlight or lamp so that I can read at night and also so that if you need to go out of your campsite at night or if you end up getting stuck stranded somewhere because of wind and you need to paddle or move at night, you have a light to do so. I have this saw knife thing that I use to collect firewood and cut firewood. You can bring an ax or different types of saws as well, but this is mine. I bring this bowl. This is a measuring cup slash bowl, so I eat out of here. I also use it to measure water when I'm cooking. Um, sometimes I bring a plate as well. I've used lots of different cook kits, but lately I just bring this and silverware for eating. Um, but usually I feel like I would be better off if I brought some kind of plate too. This is my stove. I have a little stove and lighter in here that I put on my fuel. This just attaches right onto my fuel canister and that is how I usually cook. I'm not a huge campfire cooker. Um, I like campfires and you know making s'mores and stuff like that, but I don't like when all my cooking stuff gets full of soot. I also pack coffee. There are instant coffees that you can pack. I didn't show you all the different food options that I like to pack. For some reason I just wanted to tell you that I pack coffee. <laughs> Um, this is a kettle, so this can actually go right on my stove and I can cook in this little kettle and it packs down super nice instead of bringing a big pot or pan. So I really like this, but it depends on how you like to cook and what you like to cook. And then some kind of silverware container. So like this is a nice full set of silverware that packs up. I have this here, which I don't have silverware in right now. I usually pack a knife, a spoon, a fork, and my napkin, and then this rolls up with all of that in there. And then I have a little silverware container that my friend actually made for me. And then some type of cup or mug to drink your beverages out of while you're camping. I like this for coffee. This one also has a little clip on it, so I can clip it to something on my pack if I want to, but I usually just throw it in my food barrel with my food. I have a camp sink. This is like a thing that you can fill with water and wash dishes in here, I can wash clothing in here, I can wash my hair, my face using this. It's just like a little sink. Um, and then it also is nice to help put out your fires at night. You can go down to the lake, scoop up some water, pour it on the fire, and it puts out your campfire before you go to bed really easily. This one packs up small. It's the Sea to Summit, and I really, really like this product. I've tried other camp sinks and didn't like them quite as much.
Also, of course, you always want to bring your map of your area. Even if you have a map on your GPS satellite device or on your phone, you always want to have some kind of physical map just in case, as well as a compass, and you want to know how to use your compass. So these two things can get you home if your device dies or you lose it or it gets wet or something. Very important. Um, I like to pack some kind of satellite device or uh, locating device if necessary in my specific situation. And then a bug net. So this is a net that you put on your head to keep bugs, flies, mosquitoes away from you. Um, I find this really helpful when you're paddling a canoe specifically because you can't paddle and swat bugs at the same time very easily. So I, used to, I usually pack one of these. Um, I don't often use them, but when you need them, like you really need them, so it's nice to just pack this small of an item with, just in case. And then you need some kind of life jacket. You don't need some kind of fancy, crazy life jacket setup. This is a you know, pretty reasonable life jacket from an outdoor store. You can clip with carabiners your map onto your life jacket or your bug net if you want to have that accessible. I also bring a paddle. So obviously you need to paddle when you're canoeing. You also need a canoe. I didn't put my canoe out here for this video, but I do, of course, bring some type of canoe depending on the trip, depending on the area where I'm going. There are lots of different types of canoes that you can use, that you can look through and research on your own. You can rent them from an outfitter. You can use your own. You can borrow one from a friend. There's just lots of options there. Some things that I don't have out here to show you today are a camp chair. So a camp chair is something like a small chair that you bring to sit around a campfire, pack along for that kind of thing. Usually where I go camping in the Boundary Waters, uh, there are logs set around campfires, so I don't always bring a camp chair, but they're really nice if you want to bring one or if you have back problems, that's a good idea. I don't have a pillow here other than the pillow that I make out of my clothing bag, but some people really like to bring a pillow, so that's another thing to think about. I don't have toilet paper out here right now. You're going to want to pack toilet paper. Uh, some people like to use body wipes, kind of like these face and body wipes, uh, when they go to the bathroom as well while they're camping and then pack that out with you. If you pack with tampons, if you're going to use tampons or pads, you're going to want to bring a bunch of those. And then if I do go camping when I use tampons, I will bring an extra Ziploc bag to put the dirty tampons and the wrappers in there and pack that out with me. Um, I never put dirty tampons in latrines. I like to bring a couple garbage bags and a couple extra Ziploc bags when I go camping as well because Ziploc bags can be great if you don't eat all of your food and you want to zip it up into something, save it for the next day, or if you bring graham crackers for s'mores and you open that graham cracker pack, you probably want some kind of Ziploc bag to put it in. And it's nice to have garbage bags so that all the garbage that you're making through your eating, consuming, all the garbage that you find, if you find any garbage while you're camping, if you create any garbage while you're camping, you have a place to put that, pack that, you can pack that garbage bag out with you as you leave. Fishing supplies. If you are somebody who wants to go fishing while you're camping, I didn't obviously include any of that here, but you're gonna wanna decide what you want to take fishing, what's reasonable to carry, um, how are you gonna portage your fishing pole, if it's really long, if it's a long fishing pole for summer use, are you going to portage that or are you going to pack it down smaller and then put it back together when you're out there? If you need glasses, allergy medication, emergency medication, or just any kind of medication, remember to pack that. Whatever kind of first aid kit you decide to bring, remember to think about that ahead of time, get all that supplies and pack that, probably in one of these dry bags for your trip. And of course there might be other things here that you consider a necessity while camping and I just simply don't, or things that I pack that you don't necessarily bring. But this is the gist of what I like to bring camping. Um, don't forget lighters and matches, I usually bring both. Waterproof matches are amazing. Lighters will not work when they get wet, at least for a short period of time. Hi, Artie. I'd love to hear what things you like to pack when you go camping that I don't have in this video or any questions that you have about the gear that I do have here. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Happy camping and this was a blast.